Hey guys, so I have been making some videos over the last few weeks and they're all quite bitty so I thought I should tell you a story exactly what they're about and so you understand. As part of my move to Europe I've been thinking about which car to take with me and whether I should buy an additional car that I could use around Europe. Since I'm not moving to Berlin, I don't know if that's necessary anymore, but in any case, I've been looking at some cars and I just got a bit carried away, so I had a look at some Aston Martins because um, I thought I should get maybe a Vantage, it's a smaller car. And then I looked at some Ferraris and that was just really out there. I drove past the dealership, went in, kind of liked the car, test drove it. Luckily, I was saved because while I was test driving it, someone else bought it. So, yeah. Anyway, maybe in the future when I change the cars again, I think I might get a Ferrari because Porsche have taken way too much of my money and given me zero uh, loyalty back. So I'm thinking of branching out and spending my money elsewhere. So yeah, uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the clips of various things. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't record while I was test driving because A, it feels very odd to record while you're test driving because you're trying to feel the car and enjoy it, not tell a story about it. And also, the dealers would wonder why I am making videos when I'm test driving a car. They might think I'm not a serious buyer and just fooling around. So went to Aston Martin, then went to Ferrari, and then went to Audi. Yeah, so let's watch the first one when I was at the Aston Martin dealership. Morning start. Today I came to the Aston Martin dealership to get a software upgrade on my car and they have a whole bunch of really beautiful cars here. Mine is over there. But then they have all these other beautiful cars. And check this one out. This is such a beauty. It's the Vantage S V12. And, oh, this is a V8, it says. Maybe it is a V8. I thought it was a V12. Anyhow. This is the Aston Martin Racing AMR edition. It's really, really beautiful. I am going to go for a test drive because I actually really, really like it. beautiful Alcantara and leather combination. Such a beauty. The typical Aston Martin handbrake on the side. The seats are very sporty, very very thin, but very comfortable. So yeah, That's one, and then there's another one inside. Which is this. This is the Aston Martin Racing in Volante, the convertible. And again, this one has less Alcantara and more leather because it's a convertible with all these red stripes and lines and things. I still prefer that one over this. Right, so, went out in a Advantage V8 AMR for a test drive. Absolutely loved it. So here's my baby, and here's the other car that I'm interested in. They've given me some figures and I will go have a look at it and decide if I want it and then maybe buy this beauty. So, 
Um, to sum it up, the car was amazing. It was really very, very fun to drive. It was a manual uh, transmission, uh, single mass flywheel, so you got the feel of the clutch and the whole connection with the car. All great, sounded beautiful. Um, the only thing was it's only, I think, 430 or 450 brake horsepower. It's not much. It's the same as the 911. And having driven that car, I felt like I would have two cars that would be exactly the same as the 911 in terms of the feel and the drive. Uh, so And also it was a V8 Vantage, not a V12, which kind of put me off a little. But it's a beautiful car nonetheless. However, when you look at my car and the other car parked next to each other, I think the Rapide is far more beautiful. So with the V12 and the looks, I could not uh, part with it. So I think I can that one. So that was it. Let's look at the Ferrari now. NF12 Bernaletta, and then we have the California T. So many lovely cars. I thought I would never be interested in a Ferrari, but we test drove one that I really loved. So, at the Ferrari dealership, the guy had been there for, I don't know, 13 or 18 years, or 30 years, I can't remember, but he'd been there for a long, long time. A very good salesman, and also not pushy, uh, so I had an amazing experience. He talked about various types of cars, and I said, I've never owned a Ferrari, so what do you think I should get? And then he walked me through various cars, and how they feel, and what they're about. And in the end, he suggested that I should look at the California T because it's an entry level Ferrari, so I wouldn't be uh, buying a very expensive car and not liking it at the same time. And he said it's a convertible, it's a hardtop, so it's kind of a two dual purpose car. You can use it as a daily driver because I was looking at the F12s and he said no, it's too uh, sort of sporty and to hypercar kind of supercar, um, it's quite twitchy, you won't enjoy it as a daily driver. So anyhow, I he showed me like three or four different um, California tees, they were really lovely, all of the colour combinations and things. There was one in particular that I really liked, um, it was a blue car with um, one of those special HSP, HSU, some, some pack. But basically it allows you to stiffen the suspension and uh, has a better exhaust. So I really like that one. And when we went out for a test drive and came back, someone else bought that car through one of the other salespeople in the dealership. Kind of blessing in disguise sometimes because maybe it wasn't meant to be. Um, also, even though they're part of the same group as the Aston Martin, the part exchange value that they were offering me was not good enough because uh, I paid a lot of money for the Aston Martin and suddenly to lose a lot of money over a period of 8 to 10 months it doesn't make sense. The funny thing was that um, he got the quote from the guy who sold me the car and it was very annoying because I went to another Aston Martin dealership where I was looking at the Vantage and I also looked at a DB11, the V12. Both of those uh, Aston Martin dealerships offered me amazing part exchange for my car and I was really happy and if I'd liked the DB11 or the Vantage I would have uh, swapped them but um, at the Ferrari dealership uh, it didn't happen but also in London people have so much money now uh, they know that if you don't buy it the next guy will so it doesn't really matter. I rang a couple of other dealers in uh, smaller cities in England and I definitely got better offers but they didn't have the car that I wanted. Nonetheless, Ferrari was a good experience. I think I will get one at some point but perhaps not just yet. 
So with uh, John Olsen buying an RS6 and uh, James from Mr. JWW from another uh, YouTube channel, he has an RS6 as well. So I, I know that many people like the RS6s. Uh, when, I, when my Aston Martin went in for a service, they lent me um, uh, not an RS6 but uh, an A6. Um, I didn't really like the size of the car. It felt like a big wheel and quite bulky. It wasn't powerful enough, obviously, because it wasn't uh, an RS6. So I couldn't compare and say that was an amazing experience. But I was, as I was driving to um, one of the dealerships, I can't remember, and I was heading on um, one of the big roads out of London, there was an RS4, one of the old ones, that accelerated past me. It sounded beautiful, looked beautiful, and I thought I should go check those out. So I did some research and found a couple of cars, in, one in Reading, and I thought I should go and uh, check it out. It was, I think, a 2014 uh, RS4 which was a 4.2 litre and I think a 440 brake horsepower or something, um, V6 perhaps. The trouble was the guy wasn't very knowledgeable so he didn't really give me enough information on the car so I asked him to email me the specs but uh, while I was test driving it I realised that I didn't really enjoy it very much so now I'm going to show you uh, what I felt right after the test drive again I didn't film while I was test driving the car it looks very beautiful, but um, I'm not sure. So here it goes. It's Sunday afternoon, well, 11 o'clock, and I'm on my way to an Audi dealership. Guess why? Well, as I said before in my previous videos, I'm considering getting a runaround car for when I move to Germany, just in case, well, I'll get the car once I've decided where I'm going to go, but in the meantime I'm going to go around and test drive the kind of cars I'm interested in. I was looking at the Audi S4 Avant and I found out that even though it's 330 brake horsepower and I think a 3 litre engine, it's actually a turbo engine. So now I'm looking at the RS4 and the older one, which is the 4.2 litre naturally aspirated. Yesterday was about 20 degrees sunny and really warm. So I was out all day with a friend um, and my dog, had some lunch and walked around the parks and it was really lovely. Today it's a bit overcast, just finished the test drive of the RS4. It was the 4.2 litre naturally aspirated engine. I think it's 430 or 440 brake horsepower, so quite powerful, but it doesn't sound as good as I thought it would. There's so many things that you don't realize you get spoiled by driving an Aston Martin or a Porsche. The finesse, the finish, the refinement of the car, the instant delivery of power, suspension, all of those things are really fantastic. So driving an Audi RS4, even though it's a very beautiful car, it wasn't a wow experience. It was very ordinary and I don't know if I can easily downgrade from driving this to an RS4 because I think it's not, it's not even comparable and just like the Range Rover, it's probably going to sit on the drive and never be used because I had a Range Rover for a while while I had these other cars and it just sat outside the house gathering dust for a long time until I sold it because it was never used. Um, so. I don't know, I'm still not convinced, even though I like the look of the car. And some of you will say, get the RS6. But I think the RS6 is just a wider, longer RS4, and probably far more expensive, because it's popular with the racer boys, the younger generation who have 
wives and kids, but they still want a powerful car. So, I think RS6 is certainly not for me. The RS4 looks nice and it's a small car, but it's good enough for having the dog in the back and all that. So. That is or was an option, I don't know yet. I'll have to think about it more, but it felt very small, especially getting out of this um, Aston Martin Rapide, which is a big, long beast. That thing felt so tiny. Um, the other thing was the suspension was very strange because if you put it into comfort mode, it became like a normal Audi. If you put it into dynamic mode, the suspension became extremely bumpy, but not in a good way, because when you toughen the suspension on this, it becomes firm. Same thing on the Porsche. It, it's firm, but it's not bouncy. It doesn't shake you around, whereas somehow, I'm sure they know how the technology works. Now, I don't know why they didn't do it in the Audis, because I'm sure they know how to. So, it was just very bouncy, so you, you're either in comfort or nothing because the dynamic mode was certainly not sporty. It was just bump, 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 bump. Petrol time. So I bought this drone to film some aerial shots for you guys, but I've had it for three months, maybe more. Can't seem to find anywhere around London where I can use it. Everywhere is restricted and otherwise there's too many trees, the countryside. Now I am outside of Reading, far away from London, the countryside. Still can't find anywhere where I can have like an open space and let the drone fly. I'm stopped in front of a field and my luck is so bad, it's extremely windy and very cold suddenly. It was a nice warm day and now it's cloudy and cold. So, can't fly the drone. If anyone knows where all these YouTubers go and fly their drones and film, please let me know because I want to know those roads but I can't seem to find them. It's really frustrating but... Uh, it is what it is. Okay, onwards and upwards. and I haven't really done a proper story in the video or videos so I thought I should do this connect up. I think I repeat myself too much. Hey guys, so I have not been making 